delighted to see everyone gathered here tonight, and we welcome you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to commence by committing our little message to the Lord in prayer, so let us lay hold of the throne as we go to prayer. Lord, the most heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the privilege of being here this evening for the proclamation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee for that one who was rich, who became poor, that we through his poverty might become rich. And we thank thee for the message of the gospel. We thank thee that it is a message of good news. While we're reminded that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, we are also reminded from thy word and through the gospel message. And we thank thee that Paul writing to Timothy could say, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul was able to say, of whom I am chief. And Lord, today we thank thee that when you were able to save the chief of sinners, you can save to the uttermost. And as the old preachers used to say, to the guttermost. Lord, give us help. Help us, Lord, to make the message clear and plain and simple that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Bless us. Remember, dear brother, as he operates the equipment, we pray that you'll help him. We thank thee for Johnny's faithfulness and for his ability to do it. And we pray to continue to bless him and the work here in Coleraine Independent Methodist Church. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And for his sake and his glory. Amen. Can I just say that uh, the gospel campaign in Ballymena, Tully Garley, uh, is continuing to Wednesday night when Oliver McAllister and myself will be preaching every alternative night. We have had a good week this past week and we had a wonderful time with the children yesterday when over 20 children came in cars and listened to the message of the gospel. So we'll be having our second and final uh, meeting for the boys and girls on the 9th of April next Saturday at Tully Garley Mission Hall Car Park. And if you're in the area, you'll be made very welcome. I want to speak this evening on the subject of the fool, the fool. There was a great missionary, his name was called Jim Elliot. He, with four other young missionaries, went to South America to try to reach the Aka Indians with the message of the gospel. These were men that were uncivilized, men who had never heard the gospel. Men who had bad experience of the white man. And of course these five young missionaries. Seeking to reach these men and women. With the gospel of Christ. Were martyred there in Ecuador. Way back in the 50s. I can remember hearing the news. As a little boy still at school. But Jim Elliot was a very outstanding 
young man. And he made a statement which I want to quote to you this evening. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. You see, even in spite of tragedy, those five young men, most of them married with families, left widows and children fatherless. And one would say that was an awful foolish thing to do, but it wasn't. Because through their death, that tribe, those warriors, those men that were uncontrollable, were gloriously reached with the gospel and there were many people reached and saved. I want to read a verse in 1 Samuel chapter 26 and verse 21. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return my son David, for I will no more do thee harm. Because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. Here was a king, the first king of Israel, Saul. And here in this verse of scripture, we have him admitting, playing the fool, playing the fool. You see, this man Saul had an awful hatred in David. On several occasions, David, his life was under je jeopardy as Saul tried to kill him. What prompted Saul to Say these words, I have sinned. Well, you see, David got a number of opportunities, and this was one of them, when he could have taken the life of King Saul. But he spared to do that. And when Saul realized the error of his way, he said, I have sinned. And he said, I have played the fool. You know, as you see people in everyday life, many people well brought up, many people given opportunities in life, and so many people who are playing the fool. They're down, as it were, in the depths of despair. Many of them are addicted to drink, addicted to drugs, and other habits that are wrecking their life. And we could write over so many people, I have played the fool. I wonder is there someone listening to me this evening? You're playing the fool. You know, why I was thinking on this word fool was on Friday, it was the 1st of April, what we call All Fool's Day. Maybe it's not uh, a day that is mentioned as much now, but when I was a wee boy on the 1st of April, you tried to make someone look like a fool. But I want to read another verse, and I want you to keep in mind that we're thinking about people living as fools. And here in Psalm 14, and verse 1, we have these words. <clears throat> the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. David, the psalmist, says 
the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And we're going to think for a moment or two about the infidel fool, the man or woman who has the audacity to say there's no God. In spite of all the evidence round about us, we're not too far here from the lovely uh, northwest coast and the sea and the lovely sands and strands at Port Rush and Port Stewart. And how people can look at God's creation and can say there's no God. Well, if you're like that, I have got to tell you from the authority of God's word that you're a fool. I remember being in Donegal uh, doing door-to-door work with another dear brother, a beloved friend of mine, Jim Armour. He was a retired Elam pastor. And uh, we were going from door-to-door and I was beside the door he was at and I could hear him speaking as I waited for someone to come to the door I was knocking. And I could hear uh, this man saying to Brother Jim, there is no God. This big man living in Donegal, I think he perhaps was uh, from a German descent. And very arrogantly he said to Jim, there is no God. And I'll never forget the reaction from Brother Jim. <laughs> it was a very courageous reaction. He could have, got, he could have been assaulted. <laughs> and all... Of a sudden, Jim said to this big man, When did you become a fool? When did you become a fool? And it took the man back. And some of the people that were with this man, they started to laugh. As Jim asked him the very important question, When did you become a fool. You see, friend, the Bible reminds us of the infidel fool, the fool who says there's no God. Or we could word it another way. We could say the fool has said in his heart, no God for me. Have you time for business? Have you time for pleasure? But for Christ, the Son of God, not a place can he enter in your heart for which he died. Ah, dear friend, listen to me uh, in your own home or wherever you're listening to this particular service. Remember, we have got the infidel fool. God says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But I want to turn to the New Testament, and I want to turn to Luke chapter 12, And here we have the materialistic fool. A man who was a hard worker. He was a farmer. And you know farmers aren't fools. They're hard workers. They know how to make a pound and how to keep a pound. But you know here in this passage, and I just read a few verses From Luke chapter 12, and I'll read from verse 16 to verse 20. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. 
And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so will thou has much goods laid up for many years. Take thy needs, eat, drink, and be merry. But I want you to see there's a wee but here. God had something to say. This man has done all his talking, but God had the final word. But God said unto him, Thy fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? You know, there's no problem with people trying to do well. It's good to see people being thrifty. It's good to see people being industrious. And this man, there was no problem that he wanted to work hard and he wanted to do well, but he made two awful mistakes. And because of these mistakes, God called him a fool. You might say, what were the mistakes? Well, we have them. In these verses that I've just read from. You see, he talked this man about his fruits. Verse 17. I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and he has got this word in again my fruits and then he talks about my goods you see the mistake number one he made he talked about his goods and he forgot about his God you see this man wasn't an infidel he wasn't a man who didn't believe in God because we read in verse 19 that he says, I will say to my soul. So this man knew that he had a soul. And he believed that he had a soul. He wasn't like the infidel fool in Psalm 14. And listen to what he said to his soul. Thou hast much goods. Laid up for many years. Take thy needs. Eat, drink, and be merry. Now there's nothing wrong in preparing for a rainy day. As a matter of fact, it's a good thing for people to have a little reserve for a rainy day. There's nothing wrong in taking out a pension for your retirement and preparing when you won't have the same income coming in. But here's the big mistake number two that he made. He says, he talks about many years and he thinks about many years, he thinks about time and he forgets about eternity. Dear friend, you may be listening to your last gospel message. It could be the preacher's last time preaching the gospel. For you see, in verse 20, God said unto him, Thou fool, this night, Thy soul shall be required of thee. 
Oh, you know, there are people living as if they're never going to die. There are people planning not just for days ahead, but years ahead. That's why it's always good to say God willing when we're making plans. For only God knows what the future has to hold. Yes, we had this man Saul admitting that he was playing the fool. We have in Psalm 14 God saying to the infidel, Thy fool, thy fool. And remember the man who believes there's no God or he doesn't want to give place to God's lovely son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a fool or she's a fool. Here's the man, the farmer, the two big mistakes. He talked about goods and he forgot about God. He talked about time and he forgot about eternity. And God said to him, Thy fool, tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. I've just another little uh, uh, verse that I want to read. And it's found in 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 33. And the king lamented over Abner. Now this was King David. You see, Saul was the first king in Israel. And here is the second king in Israel. The first king in Israel admitted he was playing the fool and he erred exceedingly. Here the second king, David, he's lamenting and we're told that he followed the remains of Abner when Abner was being buried. Listen to what King David said about Abner. Died Abner as a fool dieth. Died Abner as a fool dieth. Can I just say to you this morning that, or this evening that this man Abner David called him a fool. You see, it's a terrible thing for people to live as a fool. But it is a lot, lot worse. Indeed, it is absolutely unforgivable if people die as a fool. Here was a man, Abner, who died as a fool. What a tragedy. Of course, you have read the story of what happened to Abner. Abner was going to uh, the city of Hebron, which was a city of refuge. He had killed someone, and of course, he uh, would have realized that if he got to this uh, place, Hebron, he would be absolutely safe. No one could revenge uh, the death of the person that he had killed. And we read that when he got up to the gate of the city of refuge, there was a man there called Joab, and it was his brother that Abner had killed. And instead of going straight up and going in through the gates of that city without stopping where he would have been absolutely safe and secure, what did he do? He stopped. Oh, Joab was very cunning. 
He indicated to him that he wanted to talk to him. And instead of Abner getting in, fleeing into the city of refuge, he stopped. And we read that Joab killed him. He died within sight of where he would have been absolutely safe. And David said, died Abner as a full death. Ah, dear friend, don't die as a fool. Don't die in your sins. A little chorus we sing with the children. I have a soul to be saved. May this truth be engraved on my heart and my mind while I'm young. Oh, how awful the cost if my soul should be lost and in hell if I die as I am. A oh, dear friend, wouldn't it be terrible if someone had to say at your funeral service, died, whatever your name is, a fool. Ah, dear friend, trust Christ as your Savior. Stop playing the fool. Stop believing there's no God. It's only a lot of rubbish. The evidence is all around us. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Don't be like the rich farmer who had many good points but he made two awful mistakes. He thought about his goods and he forgot about his God. And isn't that typical of many people today? Many people are so dedicated and wrapped up with sport and with other things and making money that they have no thought about their precious soul. Don't you make those mistakes. In the words of that we chorus, only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. Let's just bow for a little word of prayer. And we thank you for listening in. We thank you for your interest in the things of God. And remember this. Don't die like Abner. He died as a fool dieth. Let's pray. Lord, we thank thee for being with us this evening. We thank thee for the privilege of being able to read thy precious word. And we pray that as a result of this going uh, through the airways, the uh, message, whether it be in the home looking at a computer or a laptop or whatever, we pray that it will be a blessing to precious souls. Remember the word of God. Remember the gospel of Christ. And Lord, be with us this week we have entered. For we ask it in the lovely and precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for his glory. Amen.